Hello my friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Mina Edward and I am an electrical power engineer from Egypt. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a cheap flight joystick to a precise one. This is the Genius Max Fighter F16U. It has four buttons, three axes. First the horizontal axis, left and right, then the vertical axis, up and down, then the throttle axis. We are going to leave this one alone because it doesn't have to be very precise since it's not that heavy use at the other two axes. We need to understand first why this joystick is not a precise one. Let's take a look at the test pad. You see the motion of the cross, there is some jumping and skipping, it's totally non-linear. We do the calibration all over again and see. Take a look at that, look at the motion, look at the jumping. This comes from the fact that this device uses potential meters, which are variable electrical resistors of a mechanical contact type to represent the axis movement. Let's see what happens after the calibration. It looks a little better, but there is still some jumping and skipping. This is how a potentiometer looks like. You see, the resistance is taken between the central leg and one of the two legs on the left and the right. As the shaft rotates, it changes the included length of the resistor between the two legs and thus changes the resistance. I think you all have figured out now why this device is not a precise one. Since it depends on the electrical contact, the electrical contact is affected by aging, by temperature, and even during welding it, the temperature might damage it. This is the locations of the potentiometers inside the joystick. We have three potentiometers. This is a simple demonstration of the placement of the potentiometers inside the joystick base. This is a vertical axis movement. As you move the stick forward and backward, the shaft of the potentiometer rotates as well. Now the horizontal movement. As you move it left to right, it rotates its own shaft too. This red thing on the left is called a LED, a light emitting diode. It's a light source. This other thing is called an LDR. It's a light detecting resistor. It's a resistance whose value changes with the amount of light falling on it. The more light, the less resistance, and vice versa. I actually used white LEDs, though this red color is just for demonstration. This simple test circuit will show you what an LDR can do. It is simply a battery, lamp, and LDR connected in series. When the LDR is darkened, its resistance increases, allowing less current into the lamp and less illumination. When more light falls on it, its resistance decreases, allowing more current into the lamp and more illumination. 
so I guess you must have figured out now what we are going to do. We are going to replace the potentiometers with the LDRs. Then we are going to attach the LEDs to stick axis. So the stick motion will change the LED's positions and thus the amount of light they send to the LDRs. So the resistance changes with stick position just as potentiometers, only more accurate and stable. First we need to remove the old components. We have to pop up these screws here and here. So the entire stick base will come out. Then we can pull out the potentiometer shafts, then unsolder them. When you remove the potentiometers, try extending their connections with extra pieces of wire. I used here pieces of telephone wire. And try using distinctive colors for each potentiometer. Here use the green ones for the horizontal and the orange ones for the vertical, because you don't want to get things mixed up. This is the potentiometer, LED and the LDR with a pencil for scaling. First the potentiometer, you can see me holding the shaft, rotating it. You can see the three contact points. Then we got the LED. This is white light LED. Then we got the LDR. This LDR is from 300 to 1 mega ohm resistance, almost the same range as the potentiometer. There are other sizes which are a little bigger than this one, ranging from 0 to 100 kilo ohms and from 0 to 110 kilo ohms. You can find uh, the value of the resistance of the potentiometer written on its backside. This is how the LEDs and LDRs will operate with a joystick. First of all, we have to make a shaft that looks like the potentiometer shaft and attach the LEDs to it. I used a piece of chopstick and slice it off a part of it, then attach the LED to it using threads and some glue. Here now we have the vertical movement. Like that. You must know that the top left position is a position for the least resistance for both LEDs and LDRs. So actually the LDRs will not be facing the LEDs this way, but they will have to be shifted. So in the joystick in the top left position, they will be facing the LEDs. Now we see the horizontal movement. This is the shifting I'm talking about. It is made such that when the arm is in the top position, the leg will be facing the LDR directly. Also with the horizontal movement, when it is to the maximum left, the LDR will be facing the leg as well. Now we need to energize the LED. The LED has two pools, the positive pool called the anode and the negative pool called the cathode. The cathode is very distinctive because it has a shorter leg and a part of the base slices it off. The positive supply from the USB port is leg number one and it has a red wire. And the ground supply, which is the negative pool, is leg four or five according to the type and it has a black wire. The two LEDs are connected in parallel. 
and they are connected to supply through the 100 ohm resistor to limit the current because if you don't connect this resistor the two LEDs will be burned out. These are the LEDs attached to the joystick bases and the LDRs attached to the calibration carriages at the bottom of the joystick. Now, this is the proof of the improvement we did. We will redo the calibration and see how the motion looks like. Check it out now. You can see that the motion is more stable, no jumps. Now the motion is continuous, no jumps, no discretion. It's much better now. And here are some tips. You may need to paint the sides of the LEDs to prevent unwanted extra light. You may need to try different positions with the calibration carriages and you will have to fix them. Pieces of cardboard will be good. You can use some black electrical tape to prevent ambient light from entering the joystick. Thanks for watching the video and have a nice day.